Okay, so today's lesson is on refraction through lenses. It's going to be very much like yesterday's lesson, although I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to keep it a lot shorter today than yesterday. It covers much of the same thing. So we're going to move on to lenses today. You're going to find many of the principles we covered for mirrors last class will apply to lenses, but there are some fundamental differences. We'll get into those today. We're going to talk about drawing ray diagrams for lenses. This is going to be great because it's pretty much the exact same thing as it was for mirrors, so there'll be more practice for that. And then I'll give you guys some practice time. So let's get going. So for types of lenses, there's two types of lenses. In terms of light converging and diverging, these are opposite to the naming for mirrors. Uh, now in terms of the shape, they're not opposite, just in terms of how light uh, bends. And I kind of referenced this yesterday. First of all, a convex lens is also called a converging lens. This is backwards from mirrors because convex mirrors were diverging mirrors. With lenses, it's the other way around. Convex lenses or converging lenses uh, have rays that travel perpendicular to parallel axis, refract inward. Refract is basically the lens equivalent to reflect. It just bends the light uh, and it intersects with the principal focused F. Okay, so this picture, I drew this in the, the note key. Uh, you have a convex lens. It's got that bend that convex would have uh, and that causes the light rays to bend towards the focal uh, point uh, as long as they were parallel to the principal axis in the first place. Now concave lenses, are also called diverging lenses. Again, opposite to how they were for mirrors. Concave lenses have the rays travel parallel to the principal axis and then refract outwards, appearing as though they originated at a virtual principal focus F, right? Both of these have a principal focus that we've titled F. Notice for your convex lens, it's actually on the other side of the lens, uh, but on a concave lens, it's on the same side of the lens that the light rays came from. This is another fundamental difference between lenses and mirrors. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Now, for terms, most of the terms defined for mirrors apply to lenses as well. There are, however, a few new terms. The principal focal point, that's kind of the same thing. It's the point all parallel rays are focused towards after being refracted. Now, if you look back to this concave lens image, the light is naturally being focused towards it, but the virtual light rays, the dotted lines here, would be, right? So concave lenses, that focal point still is where the light rays are converging from or diverging from. Okay, uh, secondary focal point, which is F with a little apostrophe after it, is the second focal point on the opposite side of the lens to the principal focal point. Now, I'll just jump back once again. On a convex lens, your F with a little apostrophe, or in other words, your secondary focal point, will actually be on this side. But on your concave lens, it'll be on this side. Okay, moving on. Now, optical center is the center of the lens. This is basically the equivalent of V. Remember, V was the vertex of your mirror. Uh, your optical center, O, is the center of the lens, right? It's actually inside the actual lens itself. Now, for characteristics, images formed from lenses still have the same characteristics. I'll just remind you, the magnification is the size of the image. Uh, attitude is whether it was upright or inverted. Position was the location of the image. So basically, it's your DI, your distance of your image. Uh, and the type is either real or virtual. These characteristics still exist for lenses. They did for mirrors as well. Uh, moving on. Now, for drawing ray diagrams for lenses. Once the lens is drawn, label the principal axis, the optical center, and the two focal points, your primary one and your secondary one. Now, this is kind of the same thing as it was for mirrors. Remember, you just get your situation all set up in the first place. That's step one. Step two is draw the object with proper attitude, position, and size. Just like before, objects are drawn as arrows. Real rays are drawn using solid lines, and virtual rays are drawn using dashed lines. It's the same thing as before. Now, for drawing the ray diagram itself, remember we had those steps uh, with mirrors last class. Here's really good news. It's pretty much the same thing for lenses. It's actually very, very similar. First one is a ray drawn from the tip of the object to the lens parallel to the principal axis will then refract through or to appear diverge from the principal focal point. So if you think of a convex lens like this one, convex because it's bending outwards, that light ray that's going parallel to your principal axis is going to refract at that center of the lens towards your focal point. A concave lens will make it uh, refract away from that focal point, but that dotted line still passes through it. That's why on a convex lens, you have your focal point on the other side of the mirror, or I mean of the lens, where on a concave lens, your principal focal point is on the same side of the lens as the light ray. So just be mindful of that. You might have to just remember which one bends which way. Uh, these concave, sorry, convex ones are gonna bend inwards. The concave ones are gonna bend outwards. 
Now, the next one is a ray drawn from the tip of the object to the lens through the optical center um, will continue to propagate in a straight line. This is something a little bit different than it was for mirrors. So this is where you get a big difference. For mirrors, our second one was you had to draw the line through the center of curvature, right? And then it would just reflect it back the same way it went. For lenses, however, it needs to go through the optical center of the lens, that geometric center of the lens itself, and the light is never going to even be refracted at all. It's just going to keep on going. Uh, and that's the same whether it was a convex lens or a concave lens. It's going to still continue off in a straight line. It's not going to bounce back because it's not a mirror, but it's not going to refract in a different way either. Now, the third one, of course, is very similar to what you saw with mirrors. Uh, if you take your line and you make it go through your secondary focal point, see now we're finally using it. If you take your line from the tip of your object through your secondary focal point, when it strikes your lens, it's just going to continue off a straight line parallel to the uh, principal axis. Uh, now, just note with a convex uh, lens, this image was kind of silly. I just barely hit the lens itself. Uh, it has to pass through on the same side as the light was from. But again, for a concave mirror, it's passing through on the other side of it. So that light ray is never actually touching that secondary focal point in this case, um, but that dotted line would indicate that it was, but it just continued off a straight line. Uh, now, what I want to say on this one is you might already have realized with lenses, light can exist on both sides of the lens, right? So just because you're on the opposite side of the lens doesn't mean you have to use these dotted lines. What the dotted lines represent in a lens diagram is just where the light otherwise would have gone. That's where your virtual would, would take up uh, in this case. Uh, it's not like mirrors where you're behind the mirror is your dotted line. Uh, it's just where the light ray would have gone if it hadn't been disturbed, generally speaking. So that's another really big fundamental difference. So sign conventions for lenses, converging, or in other words, convex lenses have positive focal lengths. This is where it's similar. Converging will always have a positive focal length. Diverging will always have a negative focal length. What's different for lenses is that what actually is a converging lens is different than what it was for mirrors. Converging mirrors were concave, but converging lenses are convex. Diverging lenses are the concave lenses. Remember, it was the other way around for mirrors as well. So those will have the negative focal points. Now, objects and images with positive distances are real. Objects and images with a negative distance are virtual. Objects and images with a positive height are upright. Objects and images with a negative height are inverted. So that's the same as it was before. Also the same as it was before is the equations. The equations for lenses are the exact same as they were for mirrors and they work the exact same way as well, right? Those two formulas, which are both on your formula sheet, they're still gonna be used for lenses. So let's do an example. Uh, a glowing object 2.5 centimeters tall is placed 15 centimeters from a converging lens. Uh, so in other words, a convex lens. If the lens is a focal length of 7.5 centimeters, draw a ray diagram and mathematically determine the characteristics of the image. First things first, it's a converging lens. Thank goodness it told us that because that makes our life easier. That means that focal length is indeed a positive number. We won't worry about that until we start drawing our diagram, uh, but again, it is good to know. Uh, I guess the first thing we should do is draw our object where it should be. We know it's placed 15 centimeters from that converging lens. We know it's only 2.5 centimeters tall, so it's gonna be a pretty short object. Uh, the lens has a focal length of 7.5 centimeters. Uh, we can say the uh, focal point, I guess, would be, I don't know, we'll say right about here. Um, so that's going to be our 7.5 centimeters. Notice that since this is a convex lens, this dot I just drew is actually your secondary focal point. Your primary focal point will be equal distance away from it. I'm just trying to get it as exact as I can. That looks about right. Uh, I should know if I bring my head back a bit, I can say I was a little too far away. That's a little bit better, at least it seems. That's gonna be my, my principal focal point. Uh, and then my object again needs to be 15 centimeters away from the converging lens. Well, 15 coincidentally is twice that. So I guess I can draw it right here. It's only gonna be 2.5 centimeters tall though. So probably only about that big right there. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, anyway, so now we wanna draw all of our rays. Again, this works very similar as it did for mirrors. Uh, generally speaking, what I do is I base um, where my light actually refracts off of a center line inside the lens. And I know I didn't mention this before, but I just like doing this because it, it kind of is a good habit to get into. Uh, my light rays should always refract right at that center uh, of the lens. So if I drew my first ray, which again is going to be parallel to my principal axis, parallel to the principal axis is going to go as a straight line. Ooh, and then I ruined it. Let's try it again. It's going to go as a straight line, more or less, until it hits the center of that uh, lens right there. 
And remember, then it needs to refract towards our principal focal point. So now it's going to bend towards this, so this way, and continue going. Not the greatest, but you get the idea. The next line we have to drew, that's step two, was it needs to go towards the optical center and then continue off uh, undisturbed. So basically, a line that goes kind of like this. Not doing nearly as well as it was doing last day. You get the idea. And also, you can get the idea that I need to continue off with that line. There we are. Uh, and then the third one needs to go through your secondary focal point, which is this point right here. Uh, and then it has to go and refract so that it becomes parallel to your principal axis. So then it becomes straight off like this. So I didn't do this super perfect, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, where these three lines intersect is going to be where your image forms. And it looks like it's somewhere around here. If I had used a ruler, this would have been a lot more accurate, but you can kind of get a ballpark idea here. My image is going to be formed just down here. And I'll even label that as the image. So just judging by the, um, the picture I drew, it's kind of hard to tell. My, my drawing right here really isn't perfect, but what I can definitely say is it's going to be inverted. Um, and it's also going to be real. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh, well, how is it real? Like it's on the opposite side of this, this lens. Uh, well, with lenses, of course, uh, our solid lines still dictate a real image. So that's still going to be real, but we'll use our calculations in a moment to confirm that as well. As for its size, so whether or not it's uh, larger or smaller, that's hard to tell. It almost looks like it'd be larger, but again, that could have just been the way I drew this. Let's figure this out mathematically as well. So if we're going to do this mathematically now, let me just remind you, our focal length here is going to be positive. So if we route out everything we need, I'm going to say my focal length is positive 7.5 centimeters. My object's height, so height of the object is 2.5 centimeters. The distance of my object is uh, 15 centimeters. And I think that's about all we have. So we want to figure out the other characteristics of the distance of our image and the height of our image. Well, we have a couple formulas. We have the one that says F equals uh, one over DO plus one over DI. This will be useful to find DI because we haven't got that quite yet. Oh, sorry, it's not F equals, it's one over F equals. My mistake, sorry about that. One over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. Uh, in other words, we can just say 1 over 7.5 equals 1 over 15 plus 1 over di. Uh, if we arrange this, uh, or rearrange this, I should say, you're actually going to find that di is equal to 15 centimeters, which is kind of interesting, actually. That means that image, if I go back to my image that I drew here, that image should have actually shown up at the same distance from the lens as my actual object did, which it kind of did if you look at the picture, but it also wasn't perfect. And that was because I didn't use a ruler. So be very careful and try to draw these to scale as much as you can. Uh, anyway, so we know our DI now. That's kind of cool. Um, now we should also find our HI. HI, of course, is gonna come from that formula M equals HI, HO equals negative DI uh, over DO. We don't need the magnification here, so I'm just gonna forget that. We'll say HI over HO, which is 2.5, equals negative DI, so negative 15, over DO, which is just positive 15, right? Uh, anyway, if we rearrange this, it's actually not going to be too hard to rearrange. This is just negative 1 times by 2.5. You're actually going to find that HI equals negative 2.5 centimeters, which is quite interesting, actually. So if we're going to get some information from this, first things first, because we have a positive DI, we know it's real. We know uh, since it's a negative height, we know it's inverted. And it's the exact same height in terms of an absolute number. Uh, so we know it's just the same size. So that diagram I drew, I'm just gonna bounce back to the last slide real quick. The diagram I drew wasn't perfectly accurate. Again, it looks like it was almost a little bit taller. Uh, it certainly was inverted, but it did look like it was gonna be a little taller. And again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but it's because I didn't use a ruler on that one. All right, moving on. Uh, we only have this one plus one other question. A glowing object four centimeters tall is placed nine centimeters from a diverging lens. Ooh, diverging lens. First of all, diverging lens means we're gonna have to have a negative focal length. And that was the next thing it gave us. So focal length is actually gonna be negative 5.0 centimeters. Mathematically to determine the characteristics of the image, that just means figure out everything that you don't already have. So for this question, if we're gonna list out everything we know, 
we can say f equals negative 5.0 centimeters. We know the height of the object, HO, is 4.0 centimeters. We know it's placed nine centimeters from the, the, uh, the lens, so we can say that uh, the distance of the object is 9.0 centimeters. We want to find DI and we want to find HI. Let's use that formula, one over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. We can find DI through this. Let's just be very careful to use a negative focal length here. So one over negative 5.0, equals one over 9.0 plus one over di. Subtract this over to the other side and rearrange to find di. What you should find for di is that di is negative zero, oh sorry, negative, not zero, negative 3.2 centimeters. There you go, negative 3.2 centimeters. Let me pause you on this one right now. First we see that di is negative, the distance of your object is negative, that actually tells us this is going to be a virtual image. Interesting, so we'll have a virtual image that shows up with this lens. Uh, the distance also compared to the original distance means it's going to be closer to the lens. It's gonna be closer to the lens than the actual image was, but it's going to be virtual, okay? Uh, now the other thing is we wanna find HI. I think we know we can use that formula HI over HO equals negative di over do, plug those numbers in, ho was 4.0, negative di, so negative, negative 3.2, so positive 3.2 over uh, do, which was uh, 9.0 centimeters. Uh, yeah, that's good, sorry, I was just kind of like blank in there. Uh, divide these over times by the 4.0, and we're gonna find that hi equals about 1.4 centimeters. Couple things we can get from that. Since your height of your object is positive, we can tell it's upright. And then comparing this height to the original height, we can also say it's smaller. So the image in terms of its characteristics are it's virtual, it's closer to the lens, it's upright, and it's smaller. So that's how we can compare that. Last question, we're almost done here. Look at us, we're making really good time today. Uh, at what distance above this page would a converging magnifying lens, ooh, converging, that means positive focal length, uh, that has a focal length of 10 centimeters, again, that's gonna be positive, have to be held for the image of the letters to appear upright and three times as tall. Ooh, okay, this is going to be a much harder one. There we go, I was getting a little overconfident. Let's first list out what we know. F equals uh, 10 centimeters. Um, the height of our object isn't actually known, so what we'll say is our height of our object is equal to our height of our object. Bear with me on this one. The other thing is we want the image of our letters to appear upright, so a positive height, and three times as tall. So we'll say the height of our image needs to be three times the height of our object. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit bizarre. Bear with me on this one. So we can say uh, the only thing that we can use uh, HI and HO on is our magnification formula. Magnification is HI over HO equals negative DI over DO. Um, well, I guess the only thing we can get from here is just this little bit. So we can say M equals HI, which is three HO over HO, which those cancel and you can say your magnification is three. That really shouldn't be a big surprise, but I guess we can say that three is equal to negative DI over DO, or in other words, if we times by DO on both sides, three DO equals negative DI. How would I say negative three DO equals DI? Okay. Notice how I'm not really getting anywhere on this. You might go on like, Scott, what on earth are you doing here? Basically, I'm just trying to get any relationships I can find with the information I've got. Uh, with this information that I've now set up, we can go to the other formula that says one over F equals one over DO uh, plus one over DI. Now we know F, F is positive 10. So we can say one over 10, equals one over DO, and DO is not known, so we'll just call it DO, plus one over DI, and DI is known, it's actually negative three, three DO, so negative three DO. Uh, I guess the next thing you could do, if we wanna be really crazy with this, is we could have the exact same denominator on this side. Uh, that would mean I just have to times this by negative three. So watch what I do here. One over 10 equals negative three over negative three DO, plus one over negative three DO. These now can be added together. This is gonna to give me one over 10 
equals negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2 over negative 3 DO. And now we could actually solve for DO this way. I could times by negative 3 DO and times by 10 and then divide by negative 3. And you're actually going to find that DO rounded to the nearest, um, oh geez, I guess the nearest tenth, we'll say, uh, would be 6.7 centimeters. And it is a positive number because it's going to be a negative divided by a negative. So the distance of the object is 6.7 centimeters. That tells us how, like what distance above the page would the magnifying lens have to be held? That is your distance of your object. Your object being um, the letters on the page, of course. So the distance the object is from that mirror, or I mean from that lens, sorry, would have to be 6.7 centimeters. This one was hard. If you're not getting that, don't you worry, okay? I'm not going to expect on any tests or anything, anything quite this hard, um, but it's just good to know one way or another. Anyway, we made awesome time today. That only took us a little over 20 minutes. Uh, so for practice, please work on the lenses worksheet, page 45. If you didn't get much done in that curved mirror uh, worksheet from last, last day, I would not blame you, because again, I used up like 35 minutes of your time or whatever. Um, but please get both of those worksheets done. Make sure those are, are good to go. Uh, and on uh, Thursday, Thursday's lesson, we're going to have just a formative quiz where I'll ask you a bunch of questions uh, related to this. Be prepared to draw a, a ray diagram. I am going to ask that you draw a ray diagram and then take a photo of it and submit it. But apart from that, we're done. If you have any questions, please send me an email or send me a reminder. You guys know the drill, of course. I'm here for you. Uh, and best of luck.